Welcome into episode one of Suds with Luds, episode one. And on our first episode, who else would we start with but the ambassador of the Dallas Stars, <laughs> Marty Turco. Welcome in, Marty. Thanks, Letty. How you Good doing? Good to see you. Good. Good How are you? you? This is exciting. It, it is, yeah, we're hoping it's going to be exciting, <laughs> right? It's all work in progress, folks. That's... Um, I'll, there, there's a reason. I, I love talking to goalies, number one. Mm -hmm. I, I find it fascinating, um, and you are by far the, you know, the dude here, Dallas Stars um, goaltender. But let's start with a title. Mm -hmm. President of the Dallas Stars Foundation. Yeah. How long has that been going on now? How many years? Almost five, I want to say. Does it seem been. like five, or does it seem like ten? Depends on which day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what is your main role? Um, the way I look at it is um, I got an awesome staff, yep. but you know, raise money and give it away. Um, obviously, we got to give it to the right people. So we got a lot of good programs that we do, a lot of good uh, partners, uh, nonprofits that we work with in the Metroplex. And to grow it. Every year we've gotten a little bit better. The pandemic obviously is a little bit of a stall, but you know, just really trying to help the Dallas Stars be a, a, a better corporate citizen every year. That's just kind of how we look at it. And uh, philosophically, you know, we've changed a little bit from being hockey centric, which is, you know, made sense in the past. Yeah. But uh, in this vast city, as it's growing and it's, you know, very philanthropic. Uh, it's very rich on top of it, but uh, this is an everything town. So the more we can do almost away from hockey, we help drag along some, some new hockey fans. And I think that's obviously, you know, changing lives and helping kids yeah. and all that other stuff is uh, the big, you know, that's the kick the sheets off in the morning kind of thing. But just, you know, raising money and giving it away to the people that need it the most. What about... Uh current player involvement do you have players that get down there? i know tyler sagan at one point i don't know if he still is but he was doing some stuff out there are, are there other players that you try to get involved in this stuff or do they come on their own or so, do we need to push them into it all the above yeah. really there's guys who are just born with it whether it's from their parents or their yeah. junior college team somebody in their life something happened to them um so like robertson came here right away he had a mission jake ottinger he had an idea what he wanted to do uh, the Miro Heiskanen's very smart, just quiet guy. Obviously from Finland, it's not his first language. So they've all been great. They've all they've all been great. Um, you know, we've have used Tyler a lot in the past. He's super popular, and uh, he wants to give back. And he's never not shown up. <laughs> you know, we asked him yeah. for a lot. He's never not shown up. Very proud of him. Um, sometimes, sometimes you know, the older guys need to like you know used to do with us. Just drag him along and. Some guys just, they want it, and they want to make change and difference. So um, that part's been fun. The players are, are real important. So I would assume that one of the bigger fundraisers is the event with the players that can participate in every year. This year, a little different, obviously. Yeah. Guys weren't there. I'm sure it wasn't, for the fans, it wasn't what yeah. it is. You're always expecting those guys. But that's always a, it's a hell of an event. Like, you guys mm -hmm. go out for that one. Well, we we've now have two that we use them for. The Gala, the new one, the, uh, the KZ Boots and Blades, um, which is... Uh, more of a sit down black and tie, but the uh, casino night that you know dates back, I think it was 17th year. We just had ours, and it was the first year we had it without the players. So they'll be back next year, we yep. promise. Um, they love that event too. You know, it's not the one of those events where we sit down and make them sign autographs, and it's just a great to smooth with people and you know have a drink or not, but play blackjack, play cards, converse, just on a very human level, and uh, so the players actually enjoy it. So they say, um, so we'll get back at it. But it's, it's great to have the players involvement. They help drive the bus a lot. Obviously, you know, them signing stuff. Yeah. Sticks, used sticks, game jerseys. I mean, we do a lot of stuff because of the players. So as a nonprofit, we're very fortunate to have the Dallas Stars behind us. We're eventually going to get into some hockey here, <laughs> hockey talk, since, uh, you know, our Dallas Stars are rolling along this year and playoff time is coming up. Uh, first off, your family. Uh, you and Kelly have, what, three kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two daughters? Yeah, are they? Uh, I, I know. I know your son's into hockey, mm -hmm. obviously. Which I want to get to him in a second. Daughters, any uh, athletic uh, sports in there? Uh, Haley, uh, the oldest sophomore in college, just finishing up her year. She, she's probably our most talented. You know, she is a little tennis player. She skates well. She never really p picked up hockey. She's our smallest one, but I mean, can't beat her in ping pong. She's just a uh, cool, calm. Kind of got a goalie mentality, not overly boisterous, but just... What, explain counted. goalie mentality. She, None she, of us really know. Well, she, <laughs> from my perspective, more like me, where she lets it come to her. She's a read and reactor. 
Okay. That kind of, uh, that kind of, you know, she's got a quiet confidence to her. Uh, so she's a good little athlete, but she was also, I mean, she's really smart. And then uh, she stuck through the band actually through high school. She was, oh, yeah. she was a drum major. You know, really? Only well, that ought to be one. nice in the household. That was, uh, well, drum major is the one on there directing. Um, oh, so there's not a drum, drum set and there's not she, a Vinnie Paul drum set in your house? No Vinnie Paul. No. Uh, th thank goodness. We do have a small drum set in storage somewhere. That was a small fad for the number two, Caitlin. Uh, but anyway, Haley's played the flute, and they all sang, and they got up in front of crowds during high school performances. Both, you know, piano players, both the girls. Um, and Caitlin's on her way to UT next year. She's a Good. senior in high school, graduating. I'm real proud of her. She's matured a lot in this last year, yeah. and uh, she's going to have to do a little uh, ACC route for a semester and a half to get in there. But mm -hmm. um, I'm very fond that she wants this, and uh, so I'm proud of those two. And uh, it'd be nice to have Haley back for the summer. And then the hockey player. Mm -hmm. Not a goalie. Not a goalie. Did you talk him down from being a goalie? Did you let him choose on his own? Or did he want to be like dad, a goalie? Uh, he wants what's available in the next five minutes. Yeah. I'm sure we can, yeah. most men and boys can relate to. Um, so I, I did knock him off early when he was young. I was like, listen, it's very important to skate. Um, if you watch goalies, you know, this is just for him and for anybody out there, like edge work is so important and skating is important. So I said, just work on your skating. I'll teach you myself. And I gave him a date and age. And when he turned that age, he's like, Hey, I want to play. So six months later, I've got the goalie gear. I brought it home. I unzipped it. I said, here it is. When you want to use it, just let me know. Yeah. I left it in the garage. Never asked me. It's all right. Never, and he's a, he's a, he's a bugger. Like he, he's knows what he wants, but I think he started getting better and he's a D man. He's getting assists and he's playing more. So I think he was enjoying it. And, uh, and anyway, recently he just scored his first two goals of the year. He's not overly offensive, but he's been working really hard and both top shelf, which, you know, you don't know much about, but <laughs> I don't, <laughs> but, but I do want to know why I'm going to go backwards on a couple of things. Why is it Belfour? David McKee uh, from Dallas played Nanheim goaltender yourself. You guys all, when we play in our games, our men's league games, you guys never put the pads on. No. It, it had enough of it or? Uh, you just, it's like, you can't. Al Montoya, another one. Oh, uh, yeah. He, you got to let him know he can wear some regular skates, though. He, he wears his we goalie skates. Some. We bought him you, some. You did. Good. Okay. He just thinks he, he you know, it's the balance thing. Ours are so much flatter. Yeah. And he just didn't want to be weeble wobbling out there. But we bought him some skates, so Al has used them once. Um, but we, it's, it's, so, it's just hard. It's, a, it's hard to body. Dragging your crap around is probably my biggest pet peeve. I mean, this is very rarely I'd be spoiled, but, you know, the way Sudsy and yeah. Smitty back then, you know, the way these trainers take care of us. Yeah. I mean, it's dry, it's there, it's hung up. And then now I'm like, I got to go, even if it's in our alumni center, but I'm like, it's, it's just, it's mentally taxing and it's physically taxing. And then when you're not as good as you, you think you want to be good and you're not, you're like, F this, I'd rather just go make a fool of myself playing forward. Well, it's funny because we, we just played a, an alumni game against the Detroit Red Wings here after a game that Stars played. It was a good game. But it was a great game. Yeah. And it, it was a great competition. They had some good players on Detroit side. And it's funny, like, I figured you were going to be a net. But somehow you talked Kari and Kari Lettinen into to being the goaltender, and it got you out there. And Kari, yes. and I can see why. I look back at at, at Let's, and this was a, it was a pretty it was a good pace yes. for us. Yeah. And I remember looking back halfway through the second period, and his face was as orange as your shorts. And and it's funny because uh. I, I'm thinking that's probably why that there, it's a little easier playing out here than the up and down things that you guys were actually in shape at the time yeah. to do. That was a good game. And uh, there was no uh, tomfoolery for Let's. Let's, I think, wanted to play in Yeah. There. And it's his turn. He's younger than me. Yeah, that's like, true. You get in there. Yeah. I did this. I did it. I mean, you know, I, mean, I played probably ooh, maybe six or seven alumni games. Yeah. You know, even though they all weren't that pace. But um, I'm, just, I'm just too old. Actually, my hip's killing me, so I'm... Probably won't ever play See, again. See, selfishly, we like it when you play because, as we know, you're one of the best <laughs> puck-moving goaltenders of all time. And so 
for those guys that had the opportunity to play with you, you don't have to come back as far as in your own zone. I mean, you can just hang out near the tops of the circles. And a lot of times, I, I had said to you all the time, I said, I don't even know why, if I would have played with you, and let's say Zuby's my partner, I know he would have gave it to you before he would have gave it to me because you'd have made a better outlet pass. Now, that being said, I want to go back for a second. I want to tell you something about the foundation. I got involved. Daryl Ray, uh, Razor's wife, yeah, Christine, Christine, was involved in that. She started it. Yeah. Yes. She's and so fun. there was back in the day, they got me involved in something. And I had a friend when I got done playing, and him and I were always wondering about a charity. We, we wanted to do something. We didn't know what it was. It would be for kids. Well, anyways, one of the days, they asked me to go to a children's advocacy center out, and I think it was in Plano. And... They gave me some sticks and some balls and some rubber pucks, and I went in there with the kids. You know, we were just playing with them and stuff like that, and and it was amazing because I didn't know a lot about it at the time. And I, I, we walked outside, Kevin and I, and we we had rode our Harleys there that day, and and somebody had brought the sticks or one of the people from the from the stars, and they met us there, and we walked outside, and I looked at Kevin, and I said, "This is it." This is our thing. He said, what do you mean? I said, these kids, these are the ones we want to work with. And so what we ultimately ended up doing, long story, after 15 years, we have a charity that we call 444 Angel, and we buy bicycles for, and we give them to the Children's Advocacy Centers. We do it with the military kids and things like that. And so a lot of good came, in, came out of that thing. And then there was one other event that sticks out in my mind, and I think it was Kristen asked me, he goes, listen, um, we're doing this thing with some some teens and just over teenage uh, you know, adults and things like that. Um, it's about tattoo removal, and I said, "Really?" And so, and it was somewhere over by, you know, over by AAC. And so I went to this place and kind of got lost and walked into the building. And I walked in, and I was like, "Whoa, is this the right room here?" Because they were doing the laser removal. Well, the majority of them were all gang members that were trying to get out of the gangs. You know, they're trying to get their marks and thing off. And I thought it was a joke. I'm like, wait a second. Like, I, I know, like, when we ride a lot and you do the Sturgis and you do the Daytona rides, you run into a lot of these guys. And some, you know, and so you see that. And I'm like, this was, the, they're playing a joke on me. And then I got there for a little while and it was all kids that were trying to regroup their life. And, you know, so you, it kind of went from, from the young kids to this. And so for me, that was a great experience being, par being part of that, that foundation that you're carrying on. Um, anyway, that, that's, we'll probably cut that part out. <laughs> um, no, I, I did. It's, it's one of the advantages, one of the best things about playing in the NHL or being a pro athlete is that, is that opportunity to make a yep. difference. And someone asks you, and you, you're very gracious. So, I mean, I, I just, it's, you know, there's nothing like playing in front of 18, half thousand people yep. or whatever. We had a reunion back in the day. There's nothing like it, right? Especially Stanley Cup playoff time. But there's also nothing like just a chance to put a smile on someone's face or be there and say to that those kids or those adults, be like, mm -hmm. you know what, you do, you get a second chance and yep. you know, good for you and pat them on the back and so I mean I tell you man, I'm just very fortunate to have this job and this role. Um, obviously we take it very serious. It's a big budget, um, but every day you know it's like we always do something great, make a wish. We've we just granted another one that's going to happen next year. Sure. So all, yes, all those things they add up and. Um, you know, it's more of a blessing for my life, so it's, I really enjoy it. And I know, I know you do. And we ask you to do a lot. You're, Helps you sleep at night, huh? Oh man, I sleep great. Yeah. <laughs> no, I. You know, I. I just. It, it really is. And once, and that's why I ask about players and things like that. And I go back to, to when I was in Montreal, and, and you're familiar with it. They have the saying up. You know, it's in French, and now it's in French and English. But it's. And, and I took it. I took it the right way, but it carried into it. And if you translate it, it's just from these failing hands, we pass this torch, yours to be held high. And really, it's like we're passing the torch on. So I always took it when it was explained to me from guys like Guy Lafleur, who just recently passed away, um, Larry Robinson, those kind of guys. Is like you get to a certain part in your career, now you start helping the younger guys, like we did as players. Yeah. Well, then you get out, and then you you actually start to believe, or it's a, it has a different meaning. Now we were fortunate to do the things that we do, and now we kind of get involved in all these other things. So um, I, we're going to get to hockey here eventually. Nancy Lieberman has had a great saying, and she's like, oh, her story is unreal. Her she's yeah. iconic. She gets by crazy. She, she said it one time. She goes, "You learn, you earn, and then you return." I was like, "That's it. Can't say it any better." That's just you know short way of what you're saying. And, and Tom will write that one down because Nancy's going to be in here doing this with us here, uh, hopefully, if we have an episode two or, or more. Um, she is awesome, man. Which, <laughs> Nancy's event, the golf thing that she does, is, I'm yeah. sure, you know, you're... The Dream you're, Gala, too. Yeah, I mean, it's just incredible. And the, the can of corn, I remember the first time I did anything, she has a can of corn sitting on, you know, and she explains how she had to sell that, and that's how she got money for school and things like that. 
um, which kind of leads me into the way that you're dressed. Um, you are an avid golfer, right? So um, I guess I wanted to ask, what's your favorite foursome? Ooh. Uh, you know, and I know, you know, guys, players, yeah. and, and then it's going to be your dream foursome. Okay. Um, my favorite one that I, that I really enjoy, Morrow, yep. first overall pick, even though I've been paying him a lot of money recently. Yeah. That guy plays like 200 plus rounds a year. Brendan does yeah. now? Yeah. Well, well, he's it's doing something in the golf thing, yeah, though, right? He's yeah, he's down in Austin selling driftwood, but playing. Yeah. And the course just opened uh, recently, like all 18 holes. I've only played nine. Anyway, B BMO would be in there. Um, love playing Brian Greasy, uh, old quarterback. When yep. we were same class in Michigan, we try to play every year in a, in our group. So we do we do have a group. I'd be remiss not to say the other guy. And then Travis Conlon, who's the point guard at the time from St. Clair Shores. He's maybe the funniest guy I know. Uh, so those guys are great. Ian Kinsler played a lot with. Um, just, I'm waiting he, to hear Holly and Mo and I've, Carbo. No, I mean Holly's he's a pain in the ass. I, oh, Even on the golf seven. course, I mean if he's playing great, it's fine. If he's playing like shit, he, he could yeah. he could say a thousand words. He could say two. Yeah, uh, I'm just saying for you know probably my era, my guys, um, the dear friends that play fast, they play good, and uh, we have a great time doing it. Those are the first guys that come to mind. But I, Holly and Mo were really nice to me when I got here. They're like. Heard you play golf, kid, and I was like, bam, out to Las Colinas Country Club back in the day, Hackberry, Royal Oaks even, Carbo and Luddy, or uh, Carbo and Holly were there. Yeah, not Luddy. Not Luddy. No, no, not Luddy. I played with you. We worked on your swing. Playing with me is not playing. That, that's, but that's also fun. <laughs> yeah, I spend, well, you don't see me a lot. I spend most of the time in the woods. <laughs> I'm, that's that's my spot is in there. <laughs> but you, you like to, I got, to, uh, one day I played with Holly, Mo, and Carbo, mm -hmm. and Never again. Well, as you, you know, they're they're just out of my league, and, and not that they're serious, but they're kind of serious. You know what I mean? Oh, it's important. Serious. Are you a serious golfer too? No. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm serious because we always have money on it, but I'm yeah, not, well, I'm not. I don't. I don't another reason I, I don't play. I don't grind it like they do. Like, yeah. If I miss a putt, I miss a putt. It's part of probably the goalie mentality. I, mean, I get it scored on. Like, you got to make the next save. Yeah. So I'm not worried about that shit, and I don't work on it. Probably as much as they do. I just I love having fun. I love the camaraderie. I do like the competition, but it doesn't eat me alive like some of these guys. Does your job kind of tie into playing golf with some you know, people that may be working with the foundation? Yeah, I think so. We do a lot of business on the course, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm in the smoozing networking side, and so I got a lot of companies, a lot of people, a lot of dudes, and unfortunately, I get asked to play a lot. Um, I haven't played much recently. You know, my hip's been sore. Um, I got to get a, a new. A replacement at some point, but oh. um, actually, I've been getting some work done. It feels good, so I played twice this week, and I didn't hobble in here like I normally do. Now you're just going to watch a little bit this afternoon. Um, yeah. You mentioned University of Michigan. Um, you're you're a diehard alum, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Like you go back quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. You participate. Well, in the Ring of Honor and all that kind of stuff that they have there, aren't you? Yeah. Two national championships. We won twice, lost twice. I mean, four Final Fours. Like, that was a great era for us. Our, our, our senior year, Greasy went undefeated. We won football national championship. Basketball went a couple rounds in the tournament. Uh, wrestling was good. Gymnastics was great. Softball, baseball. Like, it was just a great time for us to be there. So it was a great experience. That's what I had. Do you go, when you go, do you go to all those events also? Or are you just mainly hockey? Or? I don't get there enough, but um, I went to the Ohio State-Michigan football game this year, which was Took forever to play, but it was snowing, and we beat them first oh. time in forever. Most watched television show of the year, and uh, I took my whole family. It was great. It also helps that I talked to the AD and, and yeah. our staff. I could know them, and then uh, the current head coach, as we sit today, was my recruited me, and then the associate head coach was my roommate, teammate. So it's more personal than it is just being a fan. But um, it's great. It's a big institution. It's you know globally known and it's uh, fun to represent them and just, it was a really honored really to be part of it you know what, co what college hockey's like it's just, it was a great experience for me do they ask you to speak at any any of the things you yeah, have sometimes. to go down that route yeah you do yeah actually i spoke at um at uh, uh student athlete graduation they had a yeah. whole big one i mean phil chrysler the basketball rink went back and I actually got a little nervous i was like man there's a lot of people in there you know what happened to the uh the dream team this year well they're young we went to the Final Four. Yeah, which, they're young, but didn't didn't how many of them left? How many of them turned pro? Five. 
Did, was it five? Some older, but some of the young ones. They were they were supposed to tap dance through that. Well, they, I think expectations are always what they are, right? Well, but, th we had, it, it was an incredible year because five first round picks. Yeah. No junior or college team's ever done more than three. And not only that, we had one, two, four, five. Four of the top five. But there's, they were sophomores or freshmen. Yeah. Um, and man, just crap, like we, one year we lost three games going to the tournament. We didn't win it. Now, it's hard. It's a hard thing to win, you know that. Your opinion, will those guys be good pros? Because we know that coming out of college is a little bit different than hitting the NHL. Some, there'll be, there's two or three of them that have Hall of Fame potential, and there's two or three of other draftees that, you know, be kind of journeymen and might not yeah. hit 100 games. That's the way it goes. Like, you gotta, some have the pedigree, some don't, but hope for the ones that I'm saying, <laughs> downgrading yeah that they could be really good pros too sure. they're just they're, they're talented you know you know how hard it is there's only That's 700 some jobs annually exactly and, and everybody wants ice time and it's getting younger it's getting faster it's tough man you got you, you need a break i don't care who you are I, i've always you know when you're talking to kids and parents and things like that when they have the option to either go to junior or go to college and since i was a college guy I'm nowhere near what what you guys were and things like that but but my whole thing was, because you mentioned that, and I use that number, there's 763 players that play in the NHL, and, and if you have the, the option to go play at school, have a good time, mm -hmm. and when it doesn't work out, if it doesn't work out, maybe you're going to play in the American League, and you're going to make some decent money there, but when it's all said and done, you, you probably have some kind of degree to come out of there with school with, whereas if you go the junior route sometimes, it doesn't work out. And, and nowadays that they, they basically will say, that because they have to compete, so they'll say, well, we'll pay for how many years you play here, we'll pay for two years of school, mm. depending on the school. If how you many, don't turn pro, though. How many, how many of those guys ever really go and use it? Well, I, you think, you, I think most of those contracts you have to turn. If, once you turn pro, it's null and void. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm speaking out of turn. I don't know that for sure anymore, but that used to be the case. Yeah. It's well, nice. it is what it is. But now, the college experience, I mean, I, it's, it's, I'm, with, I'm with you. I mean, the, if you have a plan, I don't care where you play junior or college, yeah. but if you're like me and you're like wide-eyed, I have no clue, my parents, you know, my dad was a steel worker, my mom cut hair, you know, education was a big, so the opportunity to go there and just surround myself with other people that sure. have plans, I'm like, well, I need a plan, yeah. you know, and so you just get forced into the ideology that's a lot different than junior, but... Super successful junior guys. I mean, look at Ty Domi, man, he he started businesses when he was playing. I was like, what? Uh-huh. Everybody, everybody thinks, you know, 333 fights, but, you know, he's the one laughing now. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I just see him hanging out with Mark Wahlberg doing business with Marky Mark. I'm like, all right. Good for you. Yeah. Impressive. Well, and not to mention the extracurricular events that happen at school. Oh, so much fun. I mean, that's... So much fun. That's worth the... And you stayed all four years. I mean, that... I, I got booted out after two and a half, but it was time for me to go. So, it worked um, out for you. Okay, a little hockey. Yeah. Um, Michigan, two national championships, four years. Mm -hmm. Ring of Honor. We, we know that that was it. And then you stayed in the state, right? You went yeah. to Kalamazoo. Yeah. I, I couldn't the, shake it. The, and, and I, I want to get what you think about it, because I feel your pain in a sense. Because when I finished <clears throat> playing after we won the cup, I got a call the next year, winter time, and it was from our general manager, Bob Ganey, had said that, hey, I want to make a little change, and their minor league team for the Stars was in Kalamazoo, as you know, and they wanted me to go there, he wanted me to go there, and uh, the current coach, who I actually had here with the Allen Americans, um, they were going to you know, relieve them of their duties, and we were going to go there, and I'm like, where? And in Kalamazoo. And I'm like, okay, I gave me a couple of days to think about it, said, okay, and we'll get in your truck, and, and he also... Had Ganey said to me, he goes, oh, you know when you get there, there's two games, and then you guys got five days off. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's good. And I said, well, then I'd be able to, you know, show some guys, and we could talk, and, you know, if we're going to change a few things. And he goes, take your equipment with you. I'm like, what? And he said, well, take your gear with you. I said, Bo, I don't, all I need is my skates and my stick and my gloves. I'm good. I said, why would you want me to take my equipment with me? Well... I have another idea. Bob was always a guy that had a, a plan in front of a plan, and he goes, I'd like you to come back and play. I said, what? And he goes, yeah. And there was a couple guys that he wasn't really happy with, and that was the year that we won the Cup, and then he went to the finals again. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man. <clears throat> and so I said, give me a few days to think about it. I called him back, and I said, listen. I said, I'd, it's the middle of the season. He actually called me 
it was in February or December, whatever, somewhere winter month. I was with eight friends about two o'clock in the afternoon, snowmobiling about 15 beers deep. And I'm standing out in the snow because all my buddies were yelling in the bar. And I said, I'll just, I'll go outside. And I talked to him outside. And it's usually not a five minute conversation with Bob Ganey. So it ended up being like 20 minutes. I had frostbite by the time I came back in. I said, let me get back to you. And I ultimately told him, <clears throat> boy, I'd, I'd really love to do that. I said, but I have twins that are now just getting into high school. And I said, I don't care if I get embarrassed because now you're, you're 40 years old or 39 or whatever I was, and mid-season, stepping in, didn't do anything for months. And I said, I just don't want my kids going to school saying, man, did your dad get smoked last night? You know, and, that, and you can imagine, like, that's the last thing that you want. So what was your experience I, like in Kalamazoo? I didn't know you were that close to coming. Uh, well, and then let me, let me finish with that. So then that year I'm in Kalamazoo, I'm watching the games at the bar, yeah. and I'm watching the playoff games. And I'm like, shit, they're going to the finals. Eddie was great that year, right? Oh, Spectacular. They're going to the finals. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And I said, no. If anything, I could have been sitting in the press box, you know. Right. And, and so. <clears throat> well, we would have had fun together. I was the black ace again. That well, year. there you go. <laughs> so, and I kind of, you know, lost. I kind of, and, and it, they, you know, obviously you guys didn't win, but but it was what it was. Um, I had my impressions when I first got to Kalamazoo, of Kalamazoo. Mm -hmm. what, what, were, what was your experience there in, in Kalamazoo? Uh, it was actually, it was great. Yeah. You know, Bob and um you know army they all told me it's like listen we don't you don't go down there to win you go down there to learn yeah and so when i turned pro we had eddie roman turk manny fernandez mike bales i still say razor was ahead of me in the depth chart it was deep and i was like man i just left a great place i've played every game we won a championship my last my senior year and i was like and they told Balesy and I, they said, all right, you guys are going to split games till Christmas, and then it's going to figure itself out. And he was good, man. Like, he was probably still the best shootout goal I've ever seen in my life. We used to have five in the IHL, not the three like they do now. We said we had five back in 98, 99. Anyway, my experience was great. Um, Bill McDonald and then Jimmy played fair. We had, you know, after they got relieved of the duties, we had Jimmy came in. Um, my, my very first game, this is the microcosm of my pro. Very first game, saw 51 shots. Uh, stopped 50 of them. We won 2 1 against the Kansas City Blades. And I'm like, man, it's going to be a long year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we, it, we were mostly young. We had a few vets. Uh, the league was great. I mean, I'd never played in the A on the East Coast where they busted everywhere. And we had teams in Orlando, Long Beach, Vegas, Kansas City, Houston. Like, we traveled awesome. Right. Uh, and then the teams in our division, like Detroit, we played out the Palace, the Chicago Wolves. And, I mean, they're packed buildings. Uh, the Milwaukee, they played the Admirals in Milwaukee, Grand Rapids. Like, what a barn that was. Like, anyway, it was, we, we had a great experience. We were young. Uh, one time I started four games in four nights, all in different cities. That's a great, that's, that's, that's what people don't understand about the, you know, in all the minor different league. cities. Yeah. But that's saying something about yourself, too, right? I mean, what Marty Turkle can do. I mean, I was, a, I never said no. Yeah. Even with Tip asked me. He's like, I'm like, Tip, you're asking me, and the answer is yes. Yeah. I'll tell you if I'm hurt, and I can't, but... And then I always follow up. I'm like, well, if I don't play, I have to practice tomorrow? He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'll play Okay. Now. Yeah, that's what it's all about, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I learned a few things from Eddie. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> so then good. then, then we, we get to Dallas. And your first year, what, 29 wins? What did you have? What'd you have? 29 games played in your first year behind Belfort? Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, I ended up winning. The, and you had like a ridiculous goals against average, like 1-7 yeah. or something like that. Um, I had that first year back in the Betty, I think I played 26 games. And I, you have to play 25 to be eligible for like the Vesna or something. Uh, I had the highest save percentage in the yes. league. And I actually won the, the yes. award. And uh, anyway, we only played 26. And Eddie just came off two cups. We, went, we lost that year to St. Louis in the second round, his first... And it was the last year of reunion. And then we moved into American Airlines Center uh, the next year. But the next year, I mean, people, and I, I, I think this is great. I ran down a list of guys I had a, that were in front of me, but we traded Roman two days after you guys won the cup to St. Louis, yep. which I thought was a ballsy move. And then the next year, Manny Fernandez, who backed up Eddie, he got picked up in the, uh, to the Expans Wild in the expansion draft. Yep. Um, 
Anyway, they're just looking around, they're like, who's left? And it was me. And that's how it happens, right? It, it did. Yeah. And, I, and then it wasn't like I was some bum, but I was the only one left hanging around. Right. Last, last like, one standing. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And it actually worked out to my advantage because I ended up, my contracts worked. There's this odd rule in the CBA, and it still exists, right? The one where it says if you're 25 years old, you played two years pro and haven't played 30 games or more in the NHL, you're automatically unrestricted free agent. And it actually applied to me. And I ended up signing a one-way contract uh -huh. before I ever played a game in the NHL. So, so things are working out early. Things worked out great. I mean, I was older. I was 25 before I played yeah. my first game in 2000, fall of 2000. What was it like playing with Eddie? You know, and Eddie has his, as most goalies do, right? Yeah. Eddie's, I mean, I was, he was, he was really great to me yeah. during both cup runs because I was a third guy. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm like eyes wide open watching him mow down. I mean, with Salo, Fear, Wap, Hashik, like, as a goalie nutbag, it was, I remember they used to give us two tickets, and there was nowhere to sit and watch. Like, you couldn't even, there's that bony tunnel, there's yeah. jam, there's no press box, no suites. So literally, Aaron Gavey and I, we would give two away and to people, you know, for dinners and free golf. We could have used them way more. But we'd sit in the seats, because I'm like, I got to watch this. You know, technically, I was the third goalie, so sure. two guys got hurt. I wasn't drinking beers or anything, but I wanted to watch. Like, it was yeah. epic. And uh, anyway, some of the best memories of my life. And then getting a chance to play with them after that and winning save percentage. You know, we, we had a good report. It deteriorated over time. And uh, the last year where he wasn't playing well, he never even didn't talk to me once. Yeah. Uh, that's normal, right? Yeah, not, for the older guys, very normal. For him, very, very normal. We, we're, we're awesome now. Uh, we just had a... His whiskey, our beer, what game watching party together, but he he actually moved me my stalls. Did you ever hear this story? No, <laughs> this isn't going to surprise me. But what did he? Do? So you remember where you sat? Yeah. And then the two goalies were right next to yeah. you. Um, and there's the pillar. There's two support columns. A one beside yeah. Mo and Nui, and then the goalies. The stereo was kind of over there. I think. Uh, yeah. The so. sick room was by them. Yeah. And, yeah. And anyway, so the when when goalies D. And then forward started yeah. on the way out, all the way back around to the column. Uh, I came back after that year, my first year, full year, and my stuff was on the other side of the column in one of the forwards. And Eddie told Sudsy to move me, and no one ever had told him, like, no. But the, the stalls were this big. Yeah. Like, every day I had to take my helmet <laughs> off and, like, just... Just balance it on my gloves and, and Rob the Miles over there with this. He Robbie the Robbie D Robbie's only this big. He got this big stall. Yeah. It's like anyway, the whole year. So it was we didn't make the playoffs that year. And you guys never chatted about that stall movement? We don't have to. No, no. <laughs> okay. That 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 okay. We don't I'm have gonna to. I gotta write that down because yeah. when I get Bell for her, I'll get I'll get down to the bottom. I'll let you know what you probably was, already know. You know, so. he was I mean, he was best in the world. As you know, during those two years, maybe even more. And then he went to Toronto. And after that terrible year that he did have, he was... I was actually so proud of him that he came back. Sure. He was so good for Toronto. And he had the, that was the best equipment I've ever seen. And I liked his helmet with the Leafs, with the blue and the white eagle. Yeah. Anyway, his setup was always good. He was good to me uh, for the most part until that last year. But, you know, I really don't care. You mentioned equipment. Are, are you... No, are you uh, not even close? I mean, there's so many goalies, right? There, so yeah. this this pad here, this, this here, or you just put them on and go. Nah, I'm, you tinker I'm with them a little middle. bit. I tinker a little bit, yeah. Yeah, but I had, you know, because Eddie paved the way in a lot of ways, but equipment wise too. I just like regular skate sharpening. He was neurotic, curving a steel. Um, but Sudzy was used to him, so he, Sudzy would just do stuff to my equipment before I even asked. So I was like super spoiled, and then I also was um, Mr. H uh, Brian Heaton. I remember the anyway. He, he passed away, um, you know, probably ten years ago now, sadly. But I used his gear, and he was a savant. He there's goalie equipment called Heaton, which was him, and then there's a company called Brian's, which is also him because yeah. he's Brian Heaton. So I got to be around some crazy. Awesome guys. Eddie kind of made a lot of his own. Yeah. Um, but I was I was somewhere in the middle. I mean, I like my things particularly more just to move because I needed to skate. I wore a small little upper body piece, and my pads had to curve because I didn't want them tripping over myself because I was skating in the corners and 
all over the place, but uh, yeah, I, you, I wasn't too meticulous. Would you call yourself more of a reactionary kind of goaltender? Is there a name? Because you were, you, it wasn't like you ad lib, but you were all over the map. Yeah. I mean, you were I had behind the net, in the corners, like you said, and you could make the acrobatic saves and things like that. Well, it's... Agility? My, my style is no style. Okay. That's, I guess that's easy. Yeah, it's the best way to put it. To stop the park. So you were not this V8 or VH or and all this other kind of that, stuff. I never had a goalie coach yeah. until... I did have Rick St. Croix and Count Z. Remember Rick? Saint oh, Croix? yeah. Ricky. He's... He's, he's never had the ropes out there. Yeah, I remember watching school. the ropes. Talking and, angles, you know? Yeah. We were still making skate saves. Like, yeah. It was moronic, so I probably took a little from Felix Potvin, Kirk McLean, and then I'd go with Hashik. Um, uh, those are kind of guys that I would emulate growing up and then watching. I mean, Hashik was unbelievable, mm -hmm. but he was he was way more intelligent than people thought. The best shootout goalie maybe of all time. Well, so there's the debate. Patrick, Brodeur, Hashik. Yeah. Wh what order do you have them in? <laughs> or is it not fair to put them in an order? It's almost not, like... Because you got wins. Which, you know where you are? All time wins list? Probably 70 something. 66. 66? 66. Not yeah. bad for a nine year run. I know. Well, are we not counting Chicago and well, Boston? Really, it was a seven year run. Because I was going to ask you about those two teams. Like, yeah, seven year you, run. Get, you get to finish your career yeah. with two original six teams. Yeah. That's so what was your experience like in those two places? Well, they, both Espositos were kings there, and they're from my hometown. Like, how cool was it for me to go to Chicago? The reason why I wore the number 35 was because the reason why I wore it was the reason why I couldn't wear it because it was hanging in the rafters. Gotcha. And he was there, and he was alive, and yeah. I mean, he's pretty recently passed too. Um, it, uh, that that was that was an awesome experience. So did you get an opportunity to have a bunch of conversations with yeah. him then also? Yeah. With him and yeah. He was old school like Eddie. Like, yeah. don't give up your crease. And yeah. I'm like, man, that's not my style. Like, yeah. Crawford's good. I'm going to help the kid. You yeah. Know? And I'm, that's my personality. But uh, the words is <laughs> top notch family, top notch. I mean, I've never, how they took care of the guys was, yeah, was different than here and total opposite of Boston because they're cheap as hell. Um, <laughs> But it was, I mean, to watch, be with Taze every day. As a I was going to ask you about Kane and Taze. Kane was starting to mature. He was at about 10% to where he is today. Taze, I was like, I went and looked under his locker one day. I was like, is there a leadership book under here? Like, where yeah. do you pull up this shit? You yeah. Know? The, the stuff he'd say, like, I, I was used to it because of you guys. But you guys were all in your 30s. And, you know, to have, you know, you and Carbo and Keener and, and even Bundy. I mean, the young guys were hatching Maddie. Senior but they citizens, were still, yeah. You know, screwy, like, it was on top of our, you know, Nui running stuff and, you know, Holly yapping over there. But Chicago didn't have that. I was the old guy for for about half a year. Old, I went from sixth oldest, fifth oldest, yeah. maybe the seventh oldest here to the oldest. Music changed, which was terrible. Yeah, but, of course. But Taze was, like, so nice, but, like, competitive. He did win, win games on his own, and he's, there's not too many people like that. I, Good leader. I mean, he's, leader. he's known for... That leadership role, yeah. you know, and it's hard to see. It's hard to watch yeah. now, you know. And I don't mean that he's not the same player. It's just you know, players yeah. get old, and it is what it is. And then he went through his own little personal thing that he had to mm -hmm. take some time off and weather recovered. Like, so what was Boston like then? Well, but that that whole year was really interesting because I, I didn't have a job to start the year. I started doing TV, so that's kind of like writing on the wall. I started doing TV, and then even the GM's like, "Well, he's retiring. You know, I don't want to sign this guy." Looking back now, yeah. Um, I did have a three-year deal before Chicago and Philly, and Hatch called me. Hatch was there, and Hatch was like, come on, you got to do it. I'm like, man, Philly treats their goalies like crap, man. I don't want right. to go there. And both those teams just play each other in the finals. And I was like, well, one-year deal, prop yourself back up, go somewhere else. And then, obviously, pretty much the end of it, the writing was on the wall. Um, but my last year playing, living at the Lake House in Canada, we, did, we sold here, and... I went to play for Pierre Paget oh, yeah. in Salzburg. What a whack job this guy yeah. was. Uh, off the ice, having beers, go for dinner. I'm like, this guy's amazing. <laughs> like, like, what a fun guy. Yeah. He's super smart. In the locker room, holy man, he's just real. Hey, we this... won a cup with a guy like that in Montreal. <laughs> I know. It's... Well, you look at Crawford that came here later. Like, yeah. These guys are old school up nuts. Yellers and kickers and... Anyway, uh, we went and played a European championship that year. We won it. 
for an Austrian team won it. That was so that's awesome. what, is that when you were in Austria? Yeah, this was the beginning of that 11-12 season. I finished yeah. with Boston, which is... And then they signed me later that year. I went and played seven games, I want to say, with the Red Bulls, and then the playoffs, and we lost. And I, my Kelly was over there with Finley. He was three, two. Mm -hmm. uh, he's maybe three years old. And we were watching ESPN America. Boston Bruins were playing on a Saturday afternoon, and I watched Tuka Rask get hurt. And I'm like, ah, oh, the trade deadline was just Tuesday. Man, I wish I would have. I don't wish he would have got hurt last week, but yeah. you know. And I didn't know the rule. You can sign after the trade deadline, which I did. But the only difference is you can't play in the playoffs because right. the roster has to be set. Right. So Peter Shirelli, well, when I talked to Peter Shirelli, he's like, hey, Timmy's old. I'm like, well, he's my age. <laughs> We're world. And uh, uh, um, what's his name? Anton Hadobin was Hedobin. in the minors. Yep. He was hurt, too. And then they had to say, we only have a 20-year-old kid that we don't, don't trust. We need, we need four to six good games. We want to win the division. I was like, I got you back. I won a couple games maybe for him. Um, but anyway, that's how I, I, I found out. So my agent called and said, hey, it's, you know, it might be happening. Time change. I'm in Europe. And um, I found out my, my phone buzzing off. TSN reported Bruin signed Turco at 2 in the morning, I found well, out. Well, you didn't know it? I didn't know. Well, don't you have to sign off on things like that, I thought? Well, not. <laughs> apparently not. So I got up in the middle of the night, left my wife in, I don't speak German, she, should, she doesn't, with a three-year-old kid in the middle oh, of the night. Oh, nice. I was like, hey, here's the Red Bull office number. Call them, they'll, they'll fix you, get you back to And you bolted. And I had to pack up everything. <laughs> <laughs> had, to, had to flag down a cab at 5 in the morning to two-hour ride to Munich. Uh, switched my flight that Red Bull had paid for, and it just happened to be that the Bruins were playing the Leafs that night, and my flight from Munich no was right to Toronto. Went through Toronto. I landed at six o'clock. Time I got to the rink, sat in the press box with or suite with the guys, got on the bus, got on the plane, went back to Boston. I was I was a Bruin for eight weeks or so. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah, especially the, well the story. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, how else am I going to end my career with some oh, my, something like that? First thing my wife and I were like, back on the NHL insurance. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're back on it again. You're still on it now. Uh, except I it's pay the team for stuff. I pay for it now. Oh. I, pay, I still have the NHL one. I, oh, you I, do? We, we kept it, yeah. Oh, you It's do? just the oh, best one. Yeah. Once, yeah. You, once you stop, as you know, you yeah. pay for the insurance, you can't ever get it back. Yeah. So we're still paying for it. Well, Marty, you've had a hell of a career. Obviously, the number one goaltender here in Dallas Stars history. And now you're doing that stuff for the foundation. And now I want to get to the most important part of why you're here. The name of the show is Suds with Luds. <laughs> and so Are you I, want, I want to get the story behind this, the Kingsville. Yeah. Sure. And, and I saw, is that out of your hometown, Sault Ste. Marie? These no. guys? No, King, Kingsville is a city in Ontario. Or Kingsville. Yeah, Kingsville. Isn't there a show on, or is it called Kingstown? Yeah, There's, Mayor of Kingstown. Mayor of Kingstown. That's Marty Turkland and, and, uh, and Sault Ste. Marie. <laughs> So uh, how did this thing get going? So my cousin, uh, Mark Muzzin, uh, was a year younger than me. I knew him when we were super young, and then he moved to Windsor, and we got reacquainted when I went to college in Michigan, because Windsor's right there. And so when I finished, when I retired, he came up to my lake house, and he brought me this little pony keg and some silver bullet cans. He's like, hey, listen, I know you like whiskey and beer. You know, we drink Bud Light, because they yeah, which was free. And Molson, when you're in Canada, yep. it was free-ish. And um, he goes, anyway, here's a beer. I made it. It was myself. I made it. And I was like, man, I don't drink stouts. Like, the hell. Anyway, I cracked it. I'm like, man, this is pretty good. He goes, I aged at Hiram Walker Whiskey Browns. It's all this cool stuff. I'm like, oh, amazing. I gave it to some of my, like, real craft beer friends. And they're like, who made this? I'm like, my cousin did. Anyway, fast forward till today. He's like, hey, I got a guy. He's a real brewmaster, not me. His, Mark's wife and him have been in the wine business before in Canada. So there was some pedigree in the business side. And I said, Mark, listen, I live in Texas. I'm not going anywhere. I said, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it big. And we'll sell up there and we'll sell down here and we'll figure out how to meet in the middle. And so we incorporated in 2017. Uh, we've been selling up there ever since. Uh, we're finally, in the last year, been making our own beer. We've outsourced it and and it's been interesting. So we're, you know, we're making a real run at it. Um, so Kingsville is the city that's south of Windsor. It's actually the most southern city in Canada. 
uh, right on Lake Erie. Yeah. And um, so we had a Dallas company help us design the can. And, and the, he, that company actually asked us, they said, because we had other names. Um, and like, what's wrong with Kingsville? It's a great, powerful name. Windsor, is that the one right next to Detroit? Yeah. So you go Oh, south. that's when you go across the bridge, and Cheetahs is right on the right-hand side. It's the Canadian Ballet right there. Yeah, okay. So it's a suburb of Detroit, but you get to Detroit, you go south. Yeah. And then you go south to Windsor, and you keep going south to Lake Erie. It's an odd piece of geography. Um, but anyway, Lake, right on Lake Erie, our brewery is. And so that's where we're based out of, and brewing beers and selling. But we sell down here in Texas, and... We just thought right now we can't make enough, which is a good problem. That's I've, a great problem. We want to hire people, but we just don't have enough beer to justify it. Do you need taste testers or anything like that? You hire oh, a lot of taste testers. You want you, you thirsty? I'm thirsty. <laughs> yeah. I, I brought you well, I do. Have, this is mine. This is the one. Yeah. That's my uh, so, in my wheelhouse. Now, I you know when I started, it was in Montreal. Yeah. And obviously the Montreal oh. Canadians. Oh, there we. Yeah, this is why we call this show Southern Lettuce. Cold beer. Uh, um, I know you. We, in Molson, when Molson owned us, the Montreal Canadiens, cheers, Marty. Cheers, Thanks buddy. for coming. No, Seriously. This is awesome. Um, we got two cases of beer delivered every two weeks to our doorstep at our house. Yeah. I live next to a player that did not drink. He was a born-again Christian, super nice guy, tough guy, Ryan Walter. Yeah. And Wally was one of the meanest bastards to play against when he played, and a nice guy off the ice. So I got his two cases. Mm -hmm. So I got four cases every two weeks, which that, that's the definition of putting gas on a fire. Yeah. And so that was my luxury. Then when I got married, which is the only thing that came out of the marriage, um, ultimately, except my three kids, but cut that part out, um, I got, they sent... 100 cases of Molson Golden to Eagle River, Wisconsin for my wedding. Come on. 100 cases. We drank. I loved Molson Kick Golden. Oh, my God. Is it, it's yeah. the best. It was crisp. It was clean. Yep. And at 85 cases, we drank the night of the wedding. <laughs> the next day was the gift opening yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those 15 cases were gone a week later. of And, and there, I don't know how many people were in the wedding. But <laughs> I guarantee there was 80%. <laughs> of the thank you cards all said something about the beer because it was everybody had headaches because nobody we really need at that time we didn't have a lot of we have three yeah, two was, beer yeah it was, yeah, it was just, five and a half percent you yeah. know and so and people were loving it and chugging it and and that whole thing so thank god molson's owned us at the time they still do um but anyway so is this your how do you fit it all in <laughs> I don't. exactly i don't um you know the ultimate goal is to just hire great people and uh, that have experience. That's kind of everything, isn't it? Yeah. That was Bob Gainey. You ever get into this, people. surround yourself with good people. And, you know, we learned a lot from Bob. Bob doesn't get enough credit. Um, I got some great Bob stories. He have way more. But this, when I think of this opportunity to work with my cousin, one thing I never thought of that actually is super satisfying, especially during COVID, employing people. Yeah. I was like, this never dawned on me to be yeah. like, I want to start a business. I want to, but it, it and this business was going during COVID. Oh yeah, you got nothing to do but sit, sit at home and drink. We didn't really lay off people. We sold a lot, over a million bucks worth home delivery in in Windsor area. Really? Because different laws that you could deliver to the house. Yeah, it, it was interesting. So, you, are you praying for COVID to come around again? No, or? No, no? Hell no, no, because we have a tap house and a beer garden that were empty. Things that actually cash flow. <laughs> so who's no. Now, how many places in Dallas, as far as bars, uh, you have like a number on where they yeah, care? Yeah, we've, we've been in over 200 places. Uh, wow. Um, probably currently in almost around 100. Um, so we're, 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 it'll, once you start making more, you'll start seeing everywhere. Then yeah. we can justify the span. We don't even market yet, and I really have a couple people that works for us. So it's been a great venture. These, these as people like you and uh, hockey guys, we drink beer. And so all of our beers, the only one I don't have here is the IPA, but I mean, this is, this one we're drinking is 4% light lager, low cow. Yeah. Just tastes like a beer. So it's got a little more calories than most domex, uh, domestic beers. No, but you kind of got everything covered here. We, we, I think right? we do. We, we, you know, we have a Czech lager, which is, you know, made 5% five, 5 or half of Weizen, you know, satisfies that palate or IPA. We have one very drinkable, only six and a half percent. And then stout, you know, there's, there's, some other ones out there like Sours or a Bach. In Canada, there's no such thing as a Bach. It's only a Texas thing. Yeah. Um, or they call it a 2-4. When, when I was, yeah, when I was at school in North Dakota and Canada's right, and there was like, there was it would be like, hey, we're going to go pick up a 2-4. I'm like, what's a 2-4? 
You know, like a case of beer, you know, it's but, 24 beers. I said, that's a case of beer. That's not all of Canada. Some have 12? No, well, in, in out west, they call it a flat. If you say a case of beer in BC, they'll bring you 12. What do you mean, 12? 12 beers. Well, that's a half a case. To you and me. But in British Columbia, if you want 24 beers, you got to call it a flat. Well, are they 16 ounce beers? Are they still 12? No, they still 12. Well, then it's not a, that's not a case of beer. Uh, I agree. Okay. I'm just telling you. So, what, what is it? It's a pint. You said hockey players. You got Belfort's got a booze. <laughs> right. Turco's got a beer. <laughs> um, who else? There, there's other people here that have. Morrow's got. Uh, oh, Brendan's got his vodka. Tequila. Or tequila. Yeah. That'll taste like shit to me. But so. That's I, actually I really can't good. stand liquor. Um, Eddie. Really Brendan, yeah. sorry. No, but, but Eddie's got great whiskey. Oh. Dane's doing a good job. It's really good, dude. It's like turpentine. Oh, God. You just. It's hotter than hell. No, it's not. It's delicious. It burns. It's because you're. It's good when you make it with an old fashioned. You're big, but you're soft. No. Yeah, you I am. So you want the sugar in there. That's true. Yeah. The tequila is smooth. Awesome. It's earthy. Their extra añejo is it's my favorite spirit on the planet, honestly. And Eddie's straight rye, which I grew up a rye drinker, and I'm more of a bourbon Scotch guy on most days. But his rye is probably my favorite rye out there. Does Razor have his own whiskey or rye or something I heard Ra coming Ra out? Razor needs a scotch. Is that, that what he is? And he's an got, no, but he does he have his own? No. I heard he, something he about Razor. He just started promoting some stuff, yeah. Okay, maybe he's that's what it was. He's going to have to come on here and talk about himself. I'm not he just does it so he friendly. gets it for free. He gets his cars for free. He gets his booze for but free. Doesn't make him a bad guy. I know. Well, I used to get free beer, too. So Budweiser and Ezra Bush dropped off beer in my what? garage here. I got, was a golfing buddy. See, so any golfing buddies. Back in the day. His name was Gibbs Sauce. And so Sauce... Well, on Christmas, I had 30 cases, and you know, the wholesale cases, because they're brown and they're... That didn't last till Christmas morning, I hope. Well, I'd give it all to the guys. Well, uh, did you ever hear this story? Someone was no. caught stealing beer out of my garage? <laughs> Dude. At your house? At my house in Capel. So I, I couldn't shut the garage. You know, we always travel right before Christmas. Yeah. That was our thing. So we got home late the 23rd. I bought Kelly, we, Kelly and I TV for our master room, which was cool, even though it was a thousand pound TV. And I went and picked it up. I did like some errands on the 24th. Uh, Kirky Muller was having a, his party that night. And so I was trying to get things done. And Haley was not even a year old. And so, um, uh, you know, our alleys back then, they didn't have a sliding gate across the back. It's just the garage. And so when I parked, I had to leave, I had to leave the hatch open to get the TV out so I couldn't shut the garage yet. And so I was in and out of the garage. Actually, it was snowing. It was the prettiest snowfall I've ever seen in Dallas, like big flakes that you'd get up in Wisconsin or Ontario. And and I'm wearing a T-shirt and jeans because I'm going in and out. And uh, I tell Kelly, I'm like, hey, just if you go shower, take the baby. i got to put something in the room. Just shut the door. You know, big surprise TV for our bedroom. And uh, the last time I go out into the garage, and, and mind you, when I got home from the road trip, probably a couple beers on the plane back in those days. Uh -huh. I'd grab the case of beer and my beer fridge, which is right by the door, and I had all perfect, you know, labels out, all the, Bud yeah, yeah. all the Bud Lights. And the last time I went out through my laundry room, opened the door, some dude's rifling beers out of my fridge. I mean, clo as close as you and I are right now. Scared the shit out of me, right? Did he not know that you were home or didn't give a shit if you were home? Well, it turns out he's an 18-year-old kid rifling beers uh -huh. and putting them in his hoodie, but I didn't know what he was doing. He scared the shit out of me. So he starts running. So I'm like, if you're running, I'm chasing. <laughs> yeah. So I end up catching him. Long story short, I drag him back, worked him over, you know, we had a lot of testosterone back in the day. And I was pissed, you know, and I was like, man, do you still like golf clubs too? Like happened like three months earlier. Someone took, like I left the garage door for an accident. And I was mad and I, whistling for Kelly, she comes down. <laughs> and anyway, cops called, I was pissed, you know. Hey, you got a baby in the house and yeah. life. And if I knew you're stealing beer, I probably would have said, you know, here, here's beer. a few go away. Well, take yeah. a case. Yeah. I'll take my cold ones, label yeah, up. I know. Wow, so mad. Anyway, so the kicker is, long story short, other than the cop looking at me, he's like, I think this guy knows who you are. I'm like, I didn't tell him. I'm not planning on it. Like, don't tell him. I play for the start. <laughs> so they were laughing. Anyway, uh, the Lu Mike Heike called me one day. Yeah. And Mike's like, hey, what's what happened? And uh, so that weekend, somebody from the Louisville Leader, you know, like a little weekly paper Louisville does, someone f read the police beat report. My name was in there, what happened. And they used my star's 
media shot, and the article on the front page said, burglar can't score on Turco. Oh, no way. <laughs> That's a classic. So Heike calls me, and I'm like, no comment, because, you know, I wasn't very nice to the, yeah. to the kid. He was 18. He's bigger than me, for the record, but I was like, man, I was just so pissed. But Do you so, have that article? Did you cut it out? Do you have it in I your have house? have it somewhere. We've moved so much. It's somewhere in a... In a couldn't Heike find that? And, and well, I'm pull sure we could, you know. It's all microfiche. Oh, that would, be, all that would be such a great I had piece. I had tipped hair that year, so it was in my media shot, and my face was a lot square. And anyway, long story short, we, uh, maybe that's why I started a beer company. Well, I defend my beers. I got to admit, I, I love the product. Yeah. It's free right now, so <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, we love Marty, free. you've done, you've done a, a shit ton, and uh, I appreciate you coming here. I want to just finish up a little bit. Just give me two or three words. Uh, Madonna. Ah, elegant. Miss him, actually, but uh, what a treat every day to watch. It was just it was okay. a pleasure. Brett Hall. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> both, both pain in the ass, but, I mean, best shooter ever. Uh, Sergei Zubov. Uh, he, he made... He made all of us better, <laughs> and so quiet. Elite, yeah. Ugh, he's so Just good. comes to play the game. Yeah. Um, Mini, Brendan Morrow. Um, a roomie. Yeah. Um, I, tough as nails, man. Tough. Yeah. Like, he's. I don't think he knows pain. Do you think? I you know they, uh, Dustin Brown from LA announced, uh, I don't know, a little while ago. That this is going to be his last year. Yeah, you find that odd. And huh? Do you find that odd? Oh, uh, no, okay. not really. I, I think he's been. I think he had a good year last year. But no, I'm just announcing it though. Well, that kind of thing. Like Getzloff did it. Uh, a couple other guys did it. Uh, yeah, but he wasn't making the playoffs. Who? Getzloff. No, sure, but sure. Brown, Brown's like. Well, I, I maybe it was our last home game. I don't know how he did it, but it got me thinking because of the way that Brown played. You know, and, and I, he got accused of being a diver at times, right? But he was still a straight-line guy, hard-nosed guy, not a big guy. It gets me thinking of Brendan. And do you think Brendan's cut his sh uh, career short a couple years by about how hard he played every single shift, where he went to go to work in front of the net, fought anybody and, you know, whoever? Do you think that if it wasn't for things like that, he could have played another few years? Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. I, I, that's what I always say he, his best attribute was his worst. Yeah, that cost but for him. sure. That cost him. It's, it's, and and it kind of, he reminds me, you know, when, when Hatch was here as a captain, <clears throat> you know, Hatch wasn't a real vocal guy, right? But he led by the way he played. And that's how I look at Brendan. I don't know Brendan in the room as a, a vocal guy, but you always knew that when Jamie Ben, mm -hmm. when Jamie, when they show up on the ice, you're like, yeah. captain's here, let's go tonight. And if you're on the other bench, they're going, shit, the captain's here tonight. And I, I look at that, I look at Brendan, I look at Hatch, I look at you know, Jamie and those roles, what they do. Um, so anyway, um, Dave Tippett, uh, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to say three captains since 1997 when Hatch was named. Did I hit them? Or who no, were all, them, all three of them, Hatch, Minnie, and, and Chubbs, all of them just the same kind of quiet, yeah. strong leader. They, leadership comes fortunate. in different ways, right? Yeah. So they led the way they played. Yeah. You know, they, you awesome. followed. We're very fortunate. Our fans should be our sport. Yeah. Tip? Yeah, Dave Tippett. Um, I mean, kind of my hero because he made me play. I get to play a ton yeah. in a defensive system, made me look good, collect a lot of wins. So uh, he, to me, he's my, he's my coach. Like, that's who I had the most. Yeah, I played with Tip in college and, and you know, same same guy. I think he's a great coach. Um, you know, too bad that he's not in Edmonton right now, and but they've kind of made a little bit of a jump. And I'll leave you with the last one. Ken Hitchcock. <laughs> I wanted to save Hitch for last. I know. He's... I, I, I love Hitch. You can you can finish all four of these right now before you want to answer. Uh, I'll tell you what, Hitch is a winner though. That's it. Like no one, if you listen to him, you're gonna win. Yeah. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. It, 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 on that point, what I found with Hitch, and it's funny now, I you know I coach U18 team or, or elite guys, and I find myself saying so many of the things that he did. It you know all the things that we hated to hear. I find myself saying that, but when you say, if you listen to him, we win, he always had a way with the press of saying, 
if they listen to what I want them to do, we're going to win hockey games. Yeah. And we'd win. He was right. If we lost, I told him what to do. We're not going to win when we play that way. He always found a way to make sure that he was on the right side of it. Uh, and, uh, and if people don't know, but he's such an unbelievable person off the ice. Yeah. Two different people. Yeah. So he's conniving, but he's yeah. No, exactly. <clears throat> he's trying to get a job. Yeah. Done. And, and now he's in St. Louis. I yeah. mean, he is now the advisor to the coaching staff. So I don't know how much Chief uh, Craig Beru <laughs> listens to him whatsoever, or what Hitch would actually say to him. But no, great yeah. guy. Obviously, yeah. great coach. Uh, you're a great goaltender. Unbelievable work that you do with the foundation. Thanks yeah. again for being on episode <laughs> one of Suds with. Luds. Good luck, my friend. Presented by the Dub Network. Mm -hmm. Don't forget okay? that. Don't forget that. That's the most important part. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We'd be sitting on the parking lot with a cell phone <laughs> doing this thing. So, yeah. Marty, this I know is, you want to get awesome. over to the, go play a little golf. Mm -hmm. So, go Thanks, ahead man. and have a good time. Thanks, bud. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Cheers to you. Till next time, if there is one. <laughs> there will be now.